And in fact, other folks have found this by, by, doing, by focusing entirely on non-tree ring proxies for past temperature have found really all the way back to our original picture. Um, they found a medieval warm period followed by a little ice age, followed by temperatures today that are actually lower than they were in the Middle Ages. And so there's a lot of problems with these analyses. And they tend to, and when you really dig in them, they tend to point to say the evidence that current temperature increases are unusual and definitely driven by man and man CO2 is really quite equivocal. And I know that surprises folks given how much everybody wants to say the science is settled, et cetera, et cetera. But the science is indeed settled that the greenhouse gas effect exists and it can cause some warming. What's not settled is how much. And in the complex climate, it's very possible that this 0.01% change in CO2 causes so little warming that the effect is simply lost in the overall noise of the climate. And that's what we're seeing from these proxies. We're seeing that the, that, that, that temperatures are really driven by natural variations and that there's nothing unusual going on right now. We can see that two other ways I'm going to show you. People keep talking. You'll hear a lot that says, you know, we've discovered fingerprints of global warming. That's our favorite word, is we found the fingerprint of global warming, or we look at this or that and we see the fingerprint of global warming. That somehow, again, the last 50 years have been unusual and, and are so unusual that it clearly indicate that something odd is going on and it's probably because of man. So let's think about in terms of fingerprints. Here are two 51-year periods. One is from 1957 to today, the other is from 1895 to 1946. One of these, the current one, is from what people call the anthropogenic period, the period that, that climate alarmists want to say is unusual, that something odd is happening, that man is driving things. The other is from a period before 1950 when everybody agrees man had very little impact, and so it was a natural increase. And I've mixed the two up, so I won't tell you which is which. But I challenge you, because these are exactly the same scale. In fact, they were both clipped from the same uh, JPG. I, I challenge you to tell me which one is the unusual one and which one is nature. They look almost exactly the same to me. The same slope, the same kind of variation, the same kind of patterns. And so it's hard for me to say, when I look at a chart like this, where one of these is nature and one of these is recent history, history that history is somehow unprecedented when I can find an example almost identical to the last 50 years in the 50 years prior. The other fingerprint that's sort of missing is, is we have to go back to the last IPCC report. The last IPCC report showed that temperatures in the mid-troposphere, that's temperatures several kilometers above the Earth, that global warming should be most increasing the, the temperatures in the mid-troposphere above the tropics over the equator. And it actually turns out with satellite technology over the last 30 years, we can actually measure that, that area of the atmosphere. And we can hone in on that area, not at the surface, but in the mid-troposphere and above the tropics. And you see right there in the chart on the left, there's been absolutely no warming in this zone. It's been dead flat. There's no trend at all. And so the one area that the IPCC says should be warming the most from global warming in their models, is warming none at all. And in fact, the pattern that the IPCC expected, you can see it there for the mid-troposphere in the blue lines on the right. That's the pattern. Most in the tropics, a fair amount at the North Pole, um, a little bit less in the Southern Hemisphere, but that kind of pattern. The green shows you the actual pattern we see. The two things you can see is nowhere do we see as much warming as predicted. And the other pattern you see is the warming we see looks nothing like the predicted pattern. And in fact, what we actually see is isolated regional warming centered around the North Pole and some of the northern hemisphere with very little warming in the tropics and no warming uh, in the southern hemisphere at all. A very different pattern than, than, than predicted by the IPCC. So to say that we're seeing the fingerprint of global warming you know, we've already shown that we're not seeing any warming that's unprecedented, and we're not seeing warming where the IPCC and other climate models predict it to be. So it's hard to say that we're really seeing some kind of man-made global warming fingerprint today. Two last points is one of the other points that, that, that scientists make to try to get to CO2 when they've exhausted all these other arguments 
they'll make an argument, and, and I, I know this is going to sound exaggerated like a straw man, but I'm not kidding you. Their, their argument will often boil down to, well, we've considered everything that could have possibly be causing this warming, and we can't think of anything that can be causing it, so it must be an anthropogenic or man-made effect. To my mind, that's crazy. That would be like back when scientists found pulsars in the sky and couldn't explain them, immediately saying, okay, it must be aliens. Okay, and by the way, some people did say that. But immediately saying, it must be aliens because we can't explain it. The fact that we can't explain it does not mean that the effect has to be anthropogenic. It merely means we can't explain it yet. And, and it's not surprising because we really haven't studied climate in the kind of depth we're looking at it now, ever. And, and it's really a very new science compared to physics or, or geology or any of the other sciences. But frankly, I can think of a couple of things that can be. Uh, it doesn't take much imagination. The first and most obvious one is the sun. Uh, one of the ways you can look at the activity of the sun is to look at the sunspot cycle. The more sunspots in a sunspot cycle tends to be in periods where the sun is more active and has higher output. For example, we go back to the little ice age we discussed. We know that that period of cold weather coincides with something called the Maunder Minimum, a period of time where we saw very few sunspots, where we know the solar activity was minimal. And so we can associate the little ice age with a period of time where the sun had little activity, the sun was cooler, the sun's output was less, and there were fewer sunspots. So what about today? Well, here's a map of sunspots over the last 150, 160 years. And I've actually put, it's hard to kind of read that, but you do see a lot of higher spikes recently than you saw back earlier in the decade. And in fact, you can put a trailing average in, and I put a 10.8 year trailing average because that's the average sunspot cycle length. And you can see that recent solar activity as measured by sunspots over the last 50 years has been much higher than it was in the, in the 50 years before. So it shouldn't be surprising that the second half of the 20th century is warmer than the first half because we saw much higher solar activity. The other thing that helps explain changes in temperature are large-scale climate variations, and one of the most famous is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, which is actually a change in the circulation in the Pacific Ocean. And the, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or PDO, tends to go through 30 or 40 year cycles where it goes from a cool phase where temperatures uh, around the world, but particularly in, in certain parts of North America, tend to be cooler, and it tends to go through warm phases where temperature around the world can be driven warmer. And you can see that when I overlay the cool and warm phases of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation on actual temperatures, you can see that it's a tremendous correlation. When the PDO has been in its cool phase, temperatures have been flat to down. When PDO has been in its warm phase, temperatures have been up. Overlaying this picture of the PDO and this PDO cycle over the sunspot pattern we just showed that showed higher solar activity in the second half of the century really has a lot of explanatory power for the temperature increases we've seen over the last hundred years and explains quite a bit of those increases. There are still a lot of elements of the overall temperature chart from the last hundred years that we don't understand and may never understand just because the, the climate is too chaotic. But to say that there's no explanation other than man-made CO2 just is not correct. So in conclusion, we ask the question, is the warming we've seen over the last hundred years likely to do to man's CO2? Um, probably some of it. CO2 is a greenhouse gas. There's no doubt about it but probably not most of it. There's a lot of other alternate explanations, and we simply are not seeing any of the fingerprints we might expect from CO2-driven warming.